A legend in his own lifetime, Tony Christie is world renowned for his hits in Las Vegas, uh, hits which was Las Vegas. I did what I did for Maria. Is this the way to Amarillo? Avenues and alleyways, drive safely, darling, and many more great songs. Tony is proud to announce his first new album in over 12 years, We Still Shine, which is available now. And the legend that is Tony Christie joins me now. How are you doing, Tony? I'm doing great, really. Very busy, which I, I, which I don't mind because I like being busy. Yes, yes. I bet you are very, very busy, especially with this um, album, which is hot off the press. But yeah. for those of you, uh, the listeners out there who don't know Tony Christie, all about the the legend that is Tony Christie, uh, for the younger ones out there, when did you first start writing and performing music? Oh, God, uh, you're going back to when I was a little boy. Um, wow. I'm from a very, I'm from a very musical family, I, uh, Irish family. Basically, my grandparents are from County Mayo, right? And they were musicians. They were in Cayley bands. So my grandfather played the, the squeeze box, and my grandmother played the violin. And they came, they left Ireland and came to live in South Yorkshire, where my where my dad was born, and then and then I, I was born. And so I'm, I've I've been surrounded by music from being a very very small child. Uh, you know, they. My grandparents used to visit our house, but every couple of months. And um, they, my dad used to. <laughs> my dad used to play. We had a piano in the in the in the lounge. My dad used right. to play piano, and he would stand me on a stool, and I would sing to my grandparents, and they thought it was wonderful. So um, yeah, it's, it's just I've been surrounded by music all my life from being a little boy. So when did you first start writing and performing music after having your stage in front of your grandparents there? Well, basically more more performing. Did, I did a bit of writing, but I, 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 I left it to professionals. That, you know, that, uh, when I was recording with, the, with professional writers who had big, big hits around the world. Um, but, uh, yeah, I sort of started, I don't know, I was, before I was a teenager. Yeah, I was five, six, seven year old. I, my dad used to make me sing and all that. Yeah. <laughs> so were you were you always musical when you were growing up as a child? Oh, surrounded by music. Yeah, both families, my Irish side of the family and my English side of the family, uh, were very, very musical. So it, it's, it's born into me, I suppose. It's in the blood, as they say. Yes, it is, yeah. It is. Like like people when, they, I mean, in Ireland, lots and lots of um, musical uh, artists come out of there. Same like in Wales as well, you know, they say that it's yeah. all to do with if you're in the valleys there, you may yeah. be encouraged to sing in the choirs and things. And look at Tom Jones, he's doing all right for himself. Is he? <laughs> 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 yes, being from the valleys oh, there. Oh, he needs it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> now, who were your musical influences when you were growing up? It wasn't oh, Tom Jones, was it? No, it was, uh, my dad is. My dad, see, my dad was in the air force. Uh, it was stationed over in Egypt and India and all these places. And when he came back, he got a he he, he brought back he, uh, piles and piles of these seventy eight records, which yes. he, he bought uh, American records. And when when uh, when I was a a young lad, of course, rock and roll started, and I was sort of, oh yeah, 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 yeah. and then he, he was just, <laughs> and he went upstairs and brought all the, all these records down. He says, "Look, forget that rubbish." He says, "He says, listen to these, listen to these," and they were all like yeah. Ella Fitzgerald, Frank Sinatra, and all you know. There was a big band, yes. yeah, big yeah. band music from America, and that that sort of that started me off wanting to be like that. I wanted to be. The next t Tony Bennett type singer, or Frank Sinatra type singer. That's what I wanted to be. Because those singers there on those seventy eights, I bet it sounded absolutely amazing. You know? Yeah. Oh, they did. Big oh, sounds yeah. as well. You know? Yeah. And you know the sad part is, I, I lent, I gave them, lent, lent them out to relatives and never got them back. Never oh. Saw them. Yeah. All of them. Wow. I wonder what happened to them. 
They probably made a fortune selling them. They will have done, <laughs> yes. Especially if someone's got a hold of them now, my goodness. 78. I've got a few lying around here, actually, because I do a feature on the Vinyl Revival radio show, which is the 78 Super Oldie. So I'll be playing it. Yeah. I have had a Ella Fitzgerald one on. I think she was doing a duet with Louis Armstrong. I think yeah. it was Baby It's Cold Outside or something like yeah. that. Baby It's Cold Outside, yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, absolutely amazing. I love the 78. So great, great we're no memories relation. there, Tony. We're no relation, by the way. <laughs> no. <laughs> same, same, same second name. I'm, I'm, she's no relation of mine. No, no, I'm, no. I'm a, big, I'm a big fan of Ella Fitzgerald. Oh, my God. Um, oh, absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing, amazing lady. Now, what was the first song you ever performed on stage before hitting the big time? I used to, um, oh God, uh, you're going back a long time. I, I used to sing with my mate Dave, uh, we we're, were schoolmates and pals, and his mum, she played piano. She had a, what they call a glee club. Right. Um, with, with people, you know, choir, choirs, or, or older people. Um, my mate Dave and I were 15, you know, that sort of age. Yeah. Um, and we used to walk home from school singing together, doing the Everly Brothers, you know. He'd sing wow. The, He'd sing the the melody and I'd sing the harmony. Excellent. Um, and then we started singing with his mum in the glee party because we was we were sixteen, and because they used to go away doing charity shows. And right. on the way back, when, on the in the coach on the way back, they'd always uh, pull into a pub and right. and, and have a few pints. Well, Dave <laughs> and I, Dave and I were sixteen, and we we decided to join this this uh, this choir. Yes. And, uh, and at 16, we were in the pub drinking pints, you know. We loved it. <laughs> excellent times, excellent times. Can you remember what song you first sung? Can you? Everly, I think, because, it, because my mate, we, we did Everly Brothers, you know, kind of dream, 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 and that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. things like that. They're yeah, probably yeah, one yeah. of them being one of your first. Yeah. Now, we're going to move forward in time. And in 1971, you were discovered by music impresario Harvey Lisberg, who already uh -huh. had a successful track record with, art, with artists such as Herman's Hermits, Little Frankie, The Herds, and Julie Driscoll, to name but a few. And 10 CC as well, isn't it? Yes, indeed. And yeah. yeah, what was it like being signed by Harvey Lisberg after seeing your performance at the iconic Winter Gardens in Blackpool? Blackpool, that's right. Oh, my God, you've got your details. Yes. Um, yeah, well, it, well, the thing was that I was, I was, I, we were doing this show because it was the best club acts, they, they, the best comedians, best singers, best female singers, the groups. And yes. we won the best group, uh, Tony Christie and the Trackers, we were called. Wow. Um, and he came backstage at the, at the at the show in Blackpool. This is going back a long time. And he said, uh, get rid of the band. I said, what? <laughs> he says, get rid of the band. He says, you're not a band singer. He says, you're a, you're a solo artist. Solo artist, yeah. And uh, he says, I'll, I'll get you a record deal. Wow. Which he did. Because he was managing 10, 10 CC and... and uh, Herman's Hermits at the time, and I, like, yeah. I thought, okay, okay, fine. And he did, he got, he got me a record deal straight away in the, in the late 60s. Wow, we, I mean, it's it's amazing how things happened in the late 60s, 70s, how people yeah. would, you know, be watching a gig and, you know, a manager and they would just sign somebody up there and then it was a bit like Susie Quattro actually you know yeah. when Mickey Most uh, saw Susie Quattro on uh, on stage and signed her up on the spot absolutely amazing yeah 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 absolutely, absolutely. amazing <laughs> hey my goodness now we you were soon signed to MC Records and teamed yeah. with successful writing duo Mitch Murray and Peter Callender yeah. What was it like being signed and working with such great writers? Well, I mean, it was fantastic because, I mean, they, were, they had a lot of hits with other people. Um, and we, we, we became very, I mean, Mitch is still alive, but Peter, Peter died uh, quite a long time ago now. Right. Um, we, we became yeah. great friends and I used to, I used to we, they produce my first hit singles, my first few albums. 
and had worldwide hits with what they did for me. So it, it re really changed my life, basically. And your and you know your first two hits, Las Vegas, getting to number twenty one in the UK, and I did what I did for Maria, scoring as high as number two. What yeah. was it like having your first top five hit? And where were you, if you can remember, when you found out? Oh, God, it's 1971, wasn't it? 71. Yeah. 1971. Well, I'd be touring at, by that time. You know, see, when, when Las Vegas came out, it yeah. became a hit around Europe, Australia, New Zealand. became a worldwide hit. And I, was, I spent nearly two years just travelling around the world. So suddenly, and, and then, the, of course... The big one was that when it, when Amarillo, in my God, it went, it went absolutely global. It did, it, yeah. So it's, it kept me busy. I mean, I was just and, and, and we we just my wife had just had our second baby, we, you know. Uh, so it was great. We, we suddenly can afford to to buy a house and. and <laughs> Not living with our parents and all that kind of thing. You know? That's right. So with so your two so your two years really promoting, um, you know your music that really came off well for you. Oh, did, oh yeah. Oh God, it changed my life completely, completely. Because I, I think these days, I think people with the social media and everything, people aren't really having to do all the hard work like people like yourself did in order to get yourself known. You know, you had to visit these cities. You couldn't just, you know, you know, go online like people do now and go, yeah. this is my single and this is what I'm about. And do you yeah. know what I mean? Um, absolutely, yeah. Now you, you can do everything like now uh, in your house. Do a, do a video and send it around. In those days, that didn't exist. You had to go to every town, every village and do every you know, individual radio station. Um, and it was it was hard work. You had to do it. That was that was normal, and I think it. I mean, I bet it would have actually helped your craft, um, your you know your career, by you know learning by you know uh, performing at certain venues or you know when you travelled you know you know do you do a stopover you know or do you con continue on the road to the next gig because these days a lot of the acts I think. You know, they're not really, you know, they're not really learning the craft like, you know, yourself have, you know, over the time before you made the big time. Yeah, I think they've got it a lot, a lot easier these days now because they can do a, a video and send it around. Well, it, they didn't exist when I started, you know, when started having success. And you had to go and try and travel and do, and do interviews in Wigan and all over the, you know, Sunderland, Newcastle. Scotland, Wales, and you had to go and be there. You know, it's, it so, was hard work, but that was the that was the time. You know, now know, you can do it like, like now you can do it on on a on a video tape. You know, it's just amazing, isn't it? It's amazing. Yeah. So, so people like yourself who have been around all of this time, what's going to happen with the youngsters that's around now? I wonder if they're going to have the same longevity. For some reason, I don't think so, but maybe. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. <laughs> well, the, at least they're releasing on vinyl, a lot of these people, so the people will stick around a little bit longer. Yes, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> now, towards the end of 1971, your manager, Harvey Lisbeck, travelled to New York on business and approached Neil Sedaka's publisher, Don Kirshner, in search of a new song. And when Neil Sedaka played a few notes of Is This The Way To Amarillo, Harvey knew he had found your third hit records, which was a huge European hit. What did you think of the tune on reflection? Oh, it was immediate. I mean, I mean, really was immediate. Uh, he, you know, he, he went over there. He actually, he brought back two songs. Uh, uh, Harvey uh, brought back two songs. One... He played. He played. It was. It was played six songs. The right. third song he played was uh, Solitaire. Wow, and, we. And the sixth song he played was Amarillo. And he says, "I want that ballad." He says, "I want that ballad." And that one you just that. that, that <laughs> it's just funny. This. He said, "And that one you just played me." The end one. He says, "I'll take that as well." And Sadaka said, "Well, it's not finished." What he says? What do you mean it's not finished? He says, we, "We've not finished the, the lyrics for it yet." He says. 
what do you mean? He says, well, that, you know, when, when I did that, sha la 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 Yeah. It's because we haven't, we haven't got the, we've not got the lyrics for it yet. We're not, we can't think of the lyrics. To, and my manager says, that is the, that's the hit part of the song. <laughs> and I went, really? <laughs> That's excellent. Sha la 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 Bob Bob. You know. Yeah. I mean if you if you took that out of the song, it yeah. I mean it's it's all it all fits like a jigsaw, doesn't it? Oh absolutely. That was a hit that was a hit bit. You know, that was the thing that everybody sang. That's but right. It, it, dark, I didn't see they were thinking of lyrics all the time, you see. Of course, of course, E, that's a great story. I love <laughs> that. That's really funny. I like that, Tony. Now, the song, continue on with um, Amarillo, um, the song is your signature and with Peter K miming to your voice on a video for Comic Relief in 2005 and with over 17 million views on YouTube, does it surprise you how popular the song has become? No, it was, an, it was a bit of a surprise, because, to be honest with you, at the time my wife and I had left the UK to live in Spain in 1990 and this is 15 years later we, i mean i was the reason i did that was we, i like the sunshine and i could play golf in shorts and, and you know and, oh and, and yes it's lovely it's lovely all oh, around isn't oh, it golf and, <laughs> and most of my work was basically around europe and and uh, australia new zealand all these kind of places and the uk was uh, basically gone very very quiet yes. and so my wife now decided to move to spain which we did and then, of course, 2005, I got a phone call from my son, Sean. He says, oh, Dad, he says, uh, he says, do you fancy coming over and doing a, a tour? I said, I've not worked there for over 15 years, Sean. Yeah. He, said, he says, yeah, but I, I, the, the record label want to put, put out uh, uh, the best of Tony Christie. Right. And so they'll do it. And, and they said, if you come over and tour, they will TV advertise it, which will guarantee it to be a top 10 hit. Wow. So I said, oh, if you can, if you can, Sean, if you can organize a tour for me, I'll, um, we'll, we'll come back. Yeah. Which we did, and it was a long tour, about 40 days. And suddenly Amarillo became the number one, you know. And it, it really changed my life, changed my wife and mine. And we came, we came back touring and decided to stay. But because by this time, my kids were, were having kids. We were getting grandkids. Yes, yes. We, we just, <laughs> my wife says, can we, can we, Stay, shall we buy again and, and live in England? I can yes. see we can see the grandkids more more often, you know. I yes. said, yeah. Okay. So and that was that like 2005, and that's what we did. Absolutely, life's changed in that 2005. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Now, let's fast forward again. And after releasing 21 studio albums, three live albums, 13 compilations, and releasing 75 singles. You have brought us some fabulous music and performances over the decades and continue to do so with your new album. But before we talk about that, I must mention that in 2023, you released a charity single with help from Sting and Niall Rogers. Thank yeah. you for being a friend for a charity that is close to your heart. Please, yeah. could you tell us about it and how listeners can help? <laughs> Well, because about two or three years ago, my uh, all my life I've been a crossword fanatic, yeah, know, cryptic crosswords. Yes, um, and suddenly we start having problems, you know, and 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 forgetting people's names. And my wife says, "I think you've got a problem." Right. Uh, we go and see a, a doctor, a lady doctor, was, and she, we, she did tests on me and did an X-ray on my head and all that kind of thing. And she says, you, "You've got the beginning of dementia," and put me onto very strong tablets, which I'm still on. Yes. Uh, which we helped it didn't stop no it's not cured it they will cure it very shortly i, mean, I think yes but it's it's held it back and stopped it getting it any worse and that's when i did when i did that same that uh, thank you for being a friend uh, to help uh, dementia carers basically um because they they were working very hard and, and not getting any mention you know no. so so i thought that would be a nice idea and i got and sting came along when I was recording it and said and what and 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 help me sing with me you know sing with, with me yes because he's got a relation that got it I said what, what are you doing what, why are you he said I've got a relation um, in law or something this is they've got they've got they've got dementia so I want to be on it you know 
So I thought it was really good of him. It's, 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 did the um, proceeds go to Dementia UK? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Well, we'll put a link on there on when we put the uh, interview on YouTube to all of the uh, websites where you can help Dementia UK. And yeah. the thing is, uh, Tony, um, my father-in-law, he's just been diagnosed just yeah. uh, just in January. So he's on some medication. And apparently, if you, if you get the dementia when you're older, it actually slows it down. But if you got dementia when you were younger and had the medication yeah. apparently it progresses quicker so when if you went for some reason when you're older and have the medication it slows it down it's very oh. it's very um you know it's amazing how it works but the medication apparently is absolutely you know top notch and uh, slows things really. down yeah it's, it's it's i mean it's not cured it there will, there will no. be a cure believe me there will be definitely definitely they're working on it very hard now um it's just below me down a little bit, you know. I still, I still do crosswords. Yes. Um, so, you know, uh, you know, you do forget people's names sometimes. Indeed, but in other words, but other than that, it's business as usual for Tony. Business as normal, you know. It's not affecting my voice. It's not affecting my performances. No, no, all. not at all. Yes, no. yes. Like my father-in-law, he still gets out in the garden, and he still has a nice moan when the telly's on. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> and all that. So <laughs> it is business as usual there as well, Tony. Yeah. Now, um, your new album "We Still Shine," produced by executive producer Sean Fitzgerald, is a wonderful album with the writing and recording process involving friends and renowned musician musicians. Yeah. If I did such yeah. as Graham Goldman, uh, Jerry yeah. McPherson and Beth Nielsen Chapman and yeah. the sound of Nashville with your signature vocals. Uh, a powerful rhythm section featuring swooping pedal steel and Tennessee's finest pickers. What yeah. was it like recording at Blackbird Studios in Nashville? Was yeah. it an inspiring place? It was absolutely brilliant. And the re I th I, we're there for three weeks. And I've been there a few times. It's, it's only been like, like a couple of days to a single in a way. <laughs> this time I was there for three weeks doing an album. And uh, so I took my wife over to, to, to National to, to, to uh, you know, because she'd never been there. Um, and we just treated it as a recording, but also a holiday. And we used national, uh, uh, national musicians. And it was great. Just absolutely, uh, it was, it was work. It was a pleasure to do it's it. It's like a work and holiday. It was, honestly, it was. Yeah. yeah. E, that's absolutely fantastic. Well, I was actually okay. just going to mention there that your wife, Sue, uh, came over to Nashville with you. Did she enjoy the experience of being at the studio with you? Uh, and was it her first time being in the studio with you? She, the first time over there, yes. Um, she's been, obviously, to, you know, when I was recording... Over here, she's been to right. quite a few shows. By the way, which I forgot to mention, is today is it's our anniversary. So oh, happy anniversary! Fifty-six years of marriage is today. Wow, we you've done yeah. very well, I very have. well. I hope I get as far as that. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, isn't yes. it? But yeah, fifty-six years. My goodness, that's absolutely amazing. I think it's only. I think it's only about eighteen years for me. Yeah. Oh, you've plenty of time. And I've got the career hairs, but it's covered up with a bit of, uh, you know, something out of a bottle. Yeah, I've, I've dyed my hair grey to try and look golden. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you look young. You like forever, don't you? You know, if you do. Oh that. yeah. 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 <laughs> Yes, we'll have to. We might have to take your advice, Tony. <laughs> Next time I speak to you, I might be. I might be. I'll recognise you. Yeah. That's right. I'll, <laughs> I'll have a bottle of Tony Christie on me. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Now the album certainly does shine with tracks such as "Home, Home, Home." Yeah. which is very upbeat, uh, which is your uh, current single with its rhythmic banjo, harmonica and infectious beat. And just like yesterday with 
its reminiscences, having a glass of wine, listening to the radio, looking at old photographs which may fade, but the feeling and the memories will stay just like yesterday, which are absolutely such um, beautiful lyrics. Now, you had a lot of input in the album. Do you have any songs that you would be would be your go to if you were to play me a song from the album, Tony? Well, I mean, just like yesterday, it's, it's, it's about you know, it's it, written by Graham Goldman for me, right? Uh, great, 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 great songwriter. Um, so I, yeah, I would recommend that. It's, it's about it's a family, it's a family uh, song. In fact, that the whole album is basically about our lives together. And what, my wife and I's lives together. Because as soon as I heard that that track, um, just like yesterday, it was just I was really you know it really puts you in that in that in a bubble, you know, um, yeah. listening to that song, and it's so um, it's so emotional and wonderful, and I, that's yes. why I wanted to mention that to Tony to yourself, Tony, because I thought it was absolutely amazing, and that's definitely one that um, you know touches the heart. It's really, it's, it's an emotional song. I mean, the, the album, the album is an emotional album, I think. It's all about my, about our lives together, basically. So I, so when I've been married 56 years today. So it's, it's great. It's just amazing, amazing. So I hope you're going to be celebrating a little bit later on there. Oh, I think I'm going to get a takeaway. You know? Oh, I, yes, K- you've K- got to. K- KFC, you know, I've got to, you've got to be. You got to treat your wife, haven't you? Oh, you've got to push the boat out, <laughs> and then you could have some. Then you could have a glass of wine and look at the old photographs. <laughs> yes, oh, while yes. listening to your album. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so there you go then. Well, yes, I've got to say again, yes, happy anniversary then, and from all of us here. Now, on another note, the vinyl revival is upon us. So I, I have to ask you. What is your favourite record you have ever bought, and why? Bought? Yep. Oh, oh God, I, I mean, I started buying albums early. I, I was always a big Sinatra fan, Tony Bennett fan, Ella Fitzgerald fan. Oh, the great, the great old crooner singers, you know, I, I like, you know, I've just loved, from being a little boy, I've always liked singers. So if it, if it was Frank Sinatra, what track would be your favourite? Oh, God. There's millions of them. I mean, well, My Way, I think. Got to be. My Way, yes. It is a one for me as well. It's a, one of my karaoke classics, My Way. <laughs> Excellent. That's a great choice there, Tony. Now, do you have any future projects or tours you could tell us about? I'm all the time touring at the moment, you know, so I'm off to... Uh, in a few days' time, where I'm off to uh, the near hours or somewhere, I've got to keep there. Yeah. I never know. I just what's that? Oh, Canary Island. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm everywhere. I'm just touring. I've got a lot, a lot in Europe, and they wanted they wanted to put me back in in New Zealand and Australia and all that kind of thing, which I don't mind. You know, these days because my wife goes with me, so it's, it's you know. It's, it's, we treat it like a holiday, I suppose. But it's, it's, it is hard work. It's a long way to travel. I bet it is as well. And we'll put a, a we'll let listeners know about uh, where they can follow you. Uh, is it tonychristie.com is your website? Yeah, tonychristie.com is, is mine, yeah. yeah. That's great. So we'll be able to find out where you're going to be there on your tour uh, yeah. across the UK and, the, and yeah. uh, of course, Europe. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'll tell you what it is, Tony. Has nobody ever approached you to do a, t- a, t- a television special for ITV or anything? Because I think it would be would go down a storm. Not, not really, not yet. Well, you have know, you never, do, have you never done like an audience with kind of thing? Well, have you never been asked? Uh, yeah, I guess going back to the seventies when I did one film, right? Granada, I think it was. Uh, she was uh, with my band. It was like it was done live, but it wasn't a big, you know. I don't know because yeah. I could just I could just imagine you, Tony. I could just imagine because if it was me, if I was head of a television company, I would be going, Tony Christie. He's got his new album out. He's made the album with all of these f- famous friends. Why not get them all together? Get them on the television, and then we'll have millions watching. Oh, hopefully. 
That's but a good idea. Somebody says this. Have a word with it. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll, somebody <laughs> says this because I think it would go down a storm. Uh, I certainly would be tuning in in all of my family. <laughs> now, Tony. Um, unfortunately, we've run out of time. Right. So. Uh, Finally, I must say happy for anniversary again. And finally, could you introduce your latest single, Home, 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 taken from your new album, We Still Shine? I'll introduce it. My name is Tony Christie. Now, this is my new, well, this is from my new album, Home, 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 it's called. And it, was, it actually was written uh, for me by. Donald Rogers, who's in a band called Ranagrai, and he used to—I've known him for thirty odd years. He, he used to—he uh, used to be in my band years ago, right? And he's a family friend. My son was in a band with him years ago, so uh, it's just a great song. I love it. So here it is: "Home, Home, Home." Tony Christie. Tony, thank you so much for joining me on the show, and all the best. And I hope to catch up with you soon. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Take care, Tony. Thanks very much. Thank you. God bless you. God bless. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>